She's here. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, good morning. It's good to see you this morning. And a nice, beautiful day outside, beautiful green grass and trees and pollen. It's just a wonderful, wonderful time together. Glad that you've joined us in worship online here in the, in the building with us. And I tell you, we are here because God is great. Uh, God has loved us with a love that we do not deserve, not even close to deserving. Because we were, uh, we were the rebels, we were the ones who uh, disobeyed him. But he chose his love through Jesus Christ on us. So if you're able and like to, please stand with us as we begin. As we read this scripture that, that speaks a truth about who we are, that's going to lead us through the singing and through the message this morning. Let's read together. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. Ephesians 2.10 so we were created for good works, and at the very last two words are, we are to do. All right, it's not because, we don't do be, to get saved, we do because we have been saved. Because our lives, we are brand new creations in Christ uh, through faith. And so, let's sing this, this great hymn, um, Since Jesus Came Into My Heart.
You know, we talk about Jesus coming into our heart. You know, it's not in that little pumping thing down there, although he created us with that. But it's into our life, into our mind, into our soul. He came into our full being when we committed our life to him. Um, the Bible says that we love him because he first loved us. And the great depths of God's love is incredible. And as we sing this next song, just be thinking about that. Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus.
the next song is one of my favorite songs uh, as it talks about what Jesus did for us. So as we sing this, I, I want you to just really be praying and praising God uh, for this. It's when I survey the wondrous cross. Uh, I think about God's love all the time and how undeserving I am. But because of his love through Christ that, that pushes me, that compels me to love him more, to walk with him more, to give my life for him. Let's sing together. <laughs>
kids, for those that are in fifth grade and younger, please come see Miss Diane for your worship packets. And while they're doing it also, Ruth, if you and your sister would like to hand out those sheets. If you do not have one of the church covenants with you, uh, we have some ladies that will hand you one. This is last Sunday I'm really talking about this. As I said last week, this is the uh, uh, kind of the, the crux or most important time together. And then children, for those who like to go downstairs, follow Miss Christy back there. And Diane, one more behind you. Oops, he just ran by. you don't have a church covenant, please raise your hand, and they will glad to give you one up here in the front. That's the only one I see. All right, let's pray together. Father, we thank you for such great a love. God, we have loved you because you have loved us. We thank you so much for that. As we know and have said, and as your word continues to say, we are undeserving of that love because of our rebellion, our sinfulness, our selfishness. We don't care about you at times. We don't think about you at times. God, we were the rebels. We were the ones who away, we were away from you. But God, because of your love, for your glory, you sent Jesus to this world for us. Father, I pray that our hearts would be open to your word today. That we would be fully ready to be obedient to you. But God, your love for us has demanded all of us, all my life, all my soul, all my strength, every day, every thought, every action, to be devoted to you, to be shared with others. I thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to start off with some truth from God's word, the Bible. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Every person who has ever been alive besides Jesus Christ has chosen to sin, to rebel against him. We were born with that nature, and then by choice, we just loved doing it ourselves. We have fallen short of what God says, how we are to live. We have fallen short toward that mark of really Christ and how he lived. And the problem is, as Romans 6.23 says, for those wages that we owe because of our sin is death. Death is a separation from God, punishment forever and ever. But the, the great part that we see here on the screen in the word, it says, but we owe that wage of death for our sin, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. We can gain eternal life because of what Jesus Christ did for us. Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So it's that twofold. It says, it's an outward confession. It's not saying those magic words, Jesus is Lord, but it's an outward confession that Jesus is Lord, that he is the ruler, he is the boss, he is my boss, he is my ruler, and I'm committing myself to that with my life, but also believing in my heart that God raised him from the dead, saying that Jesus, all that is said about you in the word is true. And God did this for our salvation, and, and for this, you will be saved. And then there's something that we do after that that is a greater public confession, not a greater, but one that is commanded to us. Romans 6, 4 says, talking about baptism, therefore we were buried with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in the newness of life. Back here kind of hidden away is, is a baptism. 
is full of water. It can happen in a creek, in a pool, in a bathtub, in a horse trough. I've seen all of those. But it's, it's a picture of what Romans 10.9 said, is that you have confessed with your mouth, and you have believed in your heart, and now you're showing that confession. And you're showing also, through baptism, what Jesus Christ did, that he died on the cross, he was buried, but three days raised up for eternal life. And it's showing our life was dead. We put our life into Christ, and he has raised us up into newness of life, and we're walking that way. We call that saved, and it's because God is great. And it's because of God's work. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For you are saved by grace through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is God's gift, not from works, so that no one can boast. We have been saved because God's grace. He has poured this on us. He has given us faith. It's not what we do. We don't work up faith. God has given this faith. And it's not by our works, not by how good we are, where we've lived, how we've grown up, but it's because we have placed our faith in God, what he did for us through Jesus Christ. And you have been saved by God's grace. So that's it. We, we understand at some point in our life that we have sinned against God. We owe eternal death because of our sin against God. And all of us have done that. But at some point, hopefully somebody has shared with you that if you confess and believe because of God's grace and his faith, you have put your faith into him. You have committed your life to Jesus Christ to follow him. And then you ba get baptized to show others what you have done what God has done, what you have done in your own life. But we are here today because God says, now I want you to do something else. We want to gather together. And Ephesians 3, 20 and 21 says, Now to him who is able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Bringing God glory in through the church of those who have given their life to Christ, baptized, who have, who have committed their lives to Christ. And it says that God's going to do above and beyond all we ask, all we think. So what are we asking for? What are we thinking about? Because sometimes we think, oh, we're just a little bunch of group here and the world's hard, so we'll just be a little bunch of group here, and we'll just be our little bunch of group here, and, and then tomorrow we'll just be our little bunch of group here. But God says, I want to use you as individuals. I want to use you as a, as a body of believers. I want to bring glory to myself, God says, through the church, in the church. And he says, there is a power that is in us. When we confess Christ, when we give our life to Christ, God, through his Holy Spirit, invades us, fills us, changes us into a new creation that now we can walk that newness of life. Now we have a guide. Now we have someone who's saying, nope, go this way, not that way. He is leading us. He's, he brings conviction when we're wanting to be selfish. He's giving us teaching. There's a power. God is in us that comes through faith in Jesus Christ. He empowers us to live for Jesus, but we have to be obedient. It's not just we sit back and say, okay, God, work. He gives us the power to work. Pretty much everyone here came in a vehicle. You just don't go in the vehicle and sit and say, you got the power, go, All right? There's some, some process that is involved. For that to go, there's a process involved as believers, and it's called obedience to him. I've been talking about for, this is the third week, about the church. We are here to bring glory to God. I have been pastoring for many years now. I pastored in, in, in Oak Ridge, Missouri, the same church, for 16 years. Loved the church. I love God's people. Um, and there were some that whole 16 years that attended but never committed to the church. I loved them. I cared for them. I prayed for them. I hung out with them. But never could understand why they would not commit their lives publicly to the church. And, and if you've been here very long, I don't push. You know that. But I believe it's important. 
I, I present you the facts of Scripture for salvation. And I'm not going to bow breat, bow breat you, browbeat you <laughs> into, you better believe, you know. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. I give you the facts. I give you the facts that, of God's love for you. And if you choose to forget his love, you have hell awaiting you. But God loves you and, and has sent Jesus for you. And I believe in, in committing, covenanting with the church to say, I want to be a part here for the glory of God. And so I've been talking about that for a while. And in that paper you see, this is what the church covenant is. It says, recognizing we need the church and the church needs us, we covenant with one another by the power of the Spirit of God in submission to the Word of God to do these things. This is a covenant. I talked about Josiah last week and from Kings, how he, he made a covenant, an agreement, a public promise to follow God. And so we as a church, we covenant together. We've talked about these. These are on our website. There's going to be a specific place there. We can watch the three different messages. But it says that we first are gathering regularly to worship God, to care for one another. All right? Let me tell you how hard it is not to preach all these again, to speak about these, because I, I believe these things. We need to covenant, to agree, to, to meet reg regularly. Now, it's talking about in a regular fashion. doesn't mean you have to be here every time the door is open. You can. I would love it. But in a regular fashion, because life happens around us, and sometimes we are part of that life not here. Then we also scatter as partners to fulfill the great commandments and the great commission. Again, we have them on our wall. Loving God, loving people. That's the great commandments. Those are the great commandments. And then, the Great Commission is that we're going out in the, from this, this building with our lives to share that with Jesus, making disciples of Jesus wherever we go. Last week, we talked about giving sacrificially of our time, talents, and treasures. We, we are committing our lives to here. We, we give time to here. God has blessed us with gifts, he has different gifts in each one, and how we're to share those with one another, to help one another. Some are strong, some are weak, so the strong helps the weak in some areas. But everybody has a strength from God. Everybody has a gift from God or gifts from God. And then last week, we also talked about practice church discipline. And this, is, this was the hard one, and I tied it to mothers because we, we have discipline. Discipline is called for in the home in this world. But here, too, we, we, want, we want this to be a holy place, not a perfect place because we're not perfect but we're following the perfect one. We all struggle with sin, but sometimes people get into, into a sin, a pattern of sin that is very harmful to them, to others, and to the church. And so, again, that's spoken about. We have all the scriptures there on your paper in front of you. We talked about that last week. And today, concluding it with three more points. I preached two the first time, two the second time. I'm preaching three today. So sit back, people. No. These all tie, these tie together. And again, I love God's church. I love this church. And so, promote church unity. You would think this would be easy. Promote church unity. So, in order to promote it, we have to have a desire for that. And there's some churches where people are, are so aggravated against one another that there's not unity. Now, this doesn't mean we're all thinking exactly the same way. Again, we're different. Each one of us has different backgrounds. We have had hurts in the past that somebody else doesn't have. We've had blessings in the past somebody else haven't had. But we come together unified and going, God, this is your church. You have saved each one of us. And so we are focusing on you. And as we focus on you, we're drawing each other towards you, but also towards each other. And again, when we talk about church discipline, if all these other things are being practiced, Church discipline is, is a quiet thing. But we need to be thinking about unity. Because what we do is, like, they're different, they dress different, they talk different, they smell different, and so they need to be like me. No, they are they, you are you. But we, we work together, we promote this unity. And one of the verses there in the, in the sheet there, Colossians 3.14 says, and above all, put on love. After he's talked about forgiveness, he says, above all, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. 
Now, this is love. For Donna and I have been married, shoot, be 37 years, maybe? I don't know. That was a long time, all right? And, and I have had to forgive her a lot. Sorry? <laughs> No, but, but it's love. We, you know, when, when two people come together, they're, they're different. And because of our love for one, one another, we, we understand the differences. We, we work through the differences, not all the time, right? Because sometimes it's, it's ruffled. It's hard. And forgiveness sometimes is there. And, and that marriage is, by the way, the picture of Christ and the church. And so in the church, we have to work on it, too, because we have some differences. And that's why we are to, to say, God, I am loving people. And people are here, too. I'm going to love them purposefully, action-wise, with my heart. I want to love them, God, because you love them. And that's the perfect, complete bond of unity. Because I know when I'm not loving my wife, unity struggles. But when I'm loving her, unity is there. When I'm not loving you, unity struggles. And I struggle with it, too. I struggle with loving others at times. But, but God says this is what we are to commit to. This is what we are to do because these are his commandments. We are to love one another. Jesus talks about it all the time. And to put on love, okay, because it doesn't come naturally. I mean, because look around. Some of these people are hard to love, aren't they? Right? By the way, I did have cameras up here, so if you looked at somebody, I saw now, there's no cameras up here. Sorry. Um, but it is. But that's why Paul's saying put on. It's, it's something we have to decide to do. But it's God's help that's doing that. Because we're gathering. As we gather together, it does make it easier. As we're, as we're learning together, it, we're starting to find out these things. As we're learning other people's weaknesses and strengths, and they're understanding our weaknesses and strengths, because understand, hey, it's hard, but I want to love them. And as we gather, we're loving. As we're giving our life, we're loving. As we're thinking about unity, we're loving. And this also then is tied to pursue personal holiness. Talked about a few weeks ago, we've got these coals up here. And we put coals together. We light them. I'm not going to light them. But many times we, in the church, we think that we can be okay outside the church for a while. And, and again, sometimes we're away from the church and that's because it happens. There's things that happen that keep us away for a while, but our desire is to come back. But when we take a live coal and put it over here, it starts cooling off. And I know this by experience, that a time in my life was that I don't need the church. I can make it on my own. And I know what my life did. I was not pursuing personal holiness. I was not looking at God's word and, and saying, I need this God in my life. I was not looking at others who were gathering, and I'm not gathering and say, I need them, because I don't need them, because they think they're better than me. And so I put all these things upon myself, and I started getting away, and I started getting cold. I'm not gaining from others. I'm not gaining from their gifts. I'm not gaining from their prayers as much. I'm not hearing the teaching and preaching and the loving that, that I would be if I was gathering. So we gather, which helps us in our pursuit of holiness. And it's pursue, it's an effort. First Peter, Peter talks about this in 1 Peter 1, 13 to 16. He says, therefore, with your minds ready for action, purposeful. Be sober-minded, that's clear thinking, and set your hope completely on the grace, God's gifts, God's wonders, God's love, to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. In other words, Jesus, is, Jesus Christ is coming back, and we'll understand it better by and by, as an old hymn used to say. Why those people acted that way, right? But that doesn't matter. We still pursue. We still go. 
And he says, as obedient children, obedient to the word of God, do not be conformed to the desires of your former ignorance. In other words, before you were saved. We had different thinkings, different motivations, different focus before we focused and gave our life to Christ. We still struggle with that. That's why Paul's talking about this. You need to be active in this. Don't be conformed. Don't start walking backwards to what you used to be. And again, when you're away from the flames, when you're away from the, the fellowship, it's easier and easier to move away. But then these hard, strong words in verse 15 and 16. But as the one who called you is holy, that's God, you also be holy in all your conduct, for it is written, be holy because I am holy. Now, these little small words are huge at times. Be holy in all your conduct. Because what we like to do is, that, well, I struggle in this way. It's an old habit. I try, but, you know, it's just I can't get over it. And that's false. That's self. That's old. And that's why we are encouraged to pursue personal holiness. And when we are all pursuing personal holiness, the church is becoming more and more that way. By the way, this is a lifelong struggle. I mean, I'm 60 years old, and I still struggle with sin. Ow. You're a preacher. You shouldn't struggle with sin. I know. <laughs> I must be holy in all my conduct. That's why we need the encouragement of one another. I look at examples in the church and go, that's, that's what I want right there. I want to live like that. And hopefully we all have the desire for that godliness, and we all have that example of this holiness we were sinners we were rebels we were lost away from god but we have put our trust our faith in christ jesus we have become a new creation we are following him and just like we see the disciples in the scriptures following him they were idiots at times and god jesus said hey come on let's get back at it Let's follow. And God continues to do that in our life. But as we gather together, there's strength there. And then the last one. Oh, we're just flying through these, right? Support church leadership. Under the lordship of Christ. Leaders. You know, I was thinking about the leaders that we, we follow in this world. We are born into a family. We talked about this before, that hopefully there's good leadership there. The parents, they're exercising teaching and leading and exampling and, and authority and discipline. We go out and there's law enforcement officers all around that, that we follow their leading. You know, you ever come up on an accident and you want to go see what's going on or a fire and you want to see what's going on and they say, no, go that direction. And what do you do? You go, okay, I go that direction. Because you're following their leading. Hebrews 13, 7. Remember your leaders who have spoken God's word to you as you carefully observe the outcome of their lives. Imitate their faith. This is, this is hard, because this is me. There's other leaders here, but it said, basically, look at me. As a pastor, how do you see my life? How do you see our marriage? How do you see me in the community? How do you see me teaching and, and obedience? How do you see me in praying? How do you see me in so many different ways? Observe your leaders. And that's why I struggle with people who just watch television preachers. At least they call themselves preachers. Because you don't know their lives. You see a glimpse. That's why I believe in the local body. Because you have opportunity to look into leaders to see what they're teaching, to see how they're living. Again, if you come to my house, you're not going to find perfection. Thank you. 
That should have been a lot louder, a bigger amen or something, right? Because I do struggle, but you should see the direction of my life. You should see the faith in my life. You should hear the words that I have spoken to you from the word of God. It says, remember them. These are, are those who teach Bible study, those who lead in other ways. And it's very humbling because I know me at times. I struggle at times. I struggle in love. I struggle in calling. I struggle in, in a lot of different things at times in my life. But let me tell you, when, when all is going well in the body of Christ, and I'm not saying perfect, when, when we're pursuing holiness and, and unity and, and gathering and scattering and, and doing all those things, it's a joy. And that's why the reader of Hebrews, God says to us in the 17th verse of the 13th chapter, says, obey your leaders and submit to them since they keep watch over your souls as those who will give an account, so they can do this with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. Now, the obeying your leaders is talking about obeying the word of God that they are sharing, obeying the direction that they're trying to, to lead the body in, submitting to the authority of, that God has placed them in the church. And again, this is humbling to me because it's so unworthy. But the calling to me is to watch out over your souls. And it brings me grief at times. This was the hardest one for me. I get so sad at people who say, no, God, my way is better than your way, God. I'm going to come, but just when it's convenient, God. I'm going to come when I don't have anything else to do. I'm going to read the Bible, maybe. Uh, no. I'm not going to give because you know, the church has got money. I'm not going to give my life. I'm not going to give my talents, God, because they don't need it. Look at all those other people in the church. They stink. They're hypocrites. And I, and I see people walking away from God, walking away from the church, and it brings grief to me. It's hard. I was experiencing this week, and it's just how hard it is. And at times, I mean, God, I'm just going to go drive a truck so I can just be in a an enclosed thing. Now, by the way, God calls truck drivers, and I'm not doing that. But I'm saying, God, I want a different calling at times. I want something that is, is not killing me. But on the opposite extreme of that, it talks about they can do this with joy. And that's what helps me on the opposite side of grief is joy. Seeing those who have come to faith, their lives have been changed, and they tell of it to God. To see lives that have been trapped in, in patterns of sin and, and brokenness, and, and God starts leading them out of that. To see Christians who have walked away at times and, and been broken and, and gotten into messes, all of a sudden say they, they love God that people have been loving them and praying for them, and they start walking back with Christ. What a joy that is. To see, to see people grabbing a hold of the Word of God and, and taking it to their neighborhoods, taking it to their, their workplaces, taking it to the world as we're scattering. There's joy there. To see saints who have given their life to Christ go meet Him face to face. There's grief, but there's joy. tell you, so you know me, I'm very honest. That's why I knew when I got to this point how hard it was going to be. I hate grief because at times, because of, of how I'm not obedient to God, 
Sometimes when I see people walking away, I say, fine, you go on. Stupid people. Sorry. And that's not the way to be. I'm the shepherd, the under-shepherd, under the lordship of Christ, under the great shepherd, to see the sheep, go after the sheep, and say, come back to the fold. So I'm trying to pray more, trying to reach more, trying to love more. But this covenant says supporting the church leadership. Because I need your prayers. Um, I'm telling you, uh, this past week, truck driver, here I come, you know. Because I, I like being alone. I'm, I'm very introverted, by the way. And that's why, to me, I've never driven a truck. I mean, I like driving big things, but, you know, I've never gone over the road. Um, but this is good. Or maybe an astronaut, you know. I don't know. Just a single astronaut. But then I know what God has called me to do. And I know I'd be miserable outside of what God has called me to do. And so recognizing, and this is a great word here, recognizing we, I, need the church. And the church needs me. We need the church, and the church needs us. We agree with one another by the Spirit of God, under His leadership. This is why I don't talk about these things much, because I don't want John's words to convict and to lead. I want God to lead. I want God to lead in salvation, but I share about salvation. It's a different closing today, and it all goes back to 1 Timothy, which you're going back to next Sunday. For this reason, we labor and strive, because we have put our hope in the living God, who is the Savior of all people, especially of those who believe. Labor and striving together. When I sent out that, that mass text yesterday, I was talking about together. We get to go to Bible study together. We get to worship together. Together is great. The, the coals of the fire get stronger and hotter, and they're doing the work that they've been created to do. And, and I, I'm just looking forward to seeing what God is going to do through us in this church. As God leads. I'm going to be handing out some slips. Um, and if I have my two girls hand these out to everybody, please, up here. That's why you got a pen today. <laughs> Just telling you. Just give one to everybody, please. And it's something. Just doing it this way today. Because I want to. And there's places to put an X on. I want to commit my life to Jesus to be saved. But some of you here, some of you online, need to do that. And if that's what you believe God wants you to do, you put an X on there. Put your name down there, your phone or your email, and I'll contact you. Second line says, I have been saved and I need to be baptized to show that. If that's where you are, you put an X right there. Put your name, your phone number, or email. And I will contact you. Third line says, I want to commit my life to serving Jesus at New Hope. Talking about church membership, the covenant. If that is you, put an X right there. Last one, I'm a church member already, and I want to recommit my life to serving, serving Jesus at New Hope. If you believe God wants you to do that, put an X right there. Put your name, your phone number, or your email. But if you have questions, that's what the second part is. You can just put a question mark. So I want to commit my life to Jesus, but I just don't know. Do a question mark. I've been saved, but I need to be baptized, but I, I, don't, I just don't know. Question mark. I want to commit my life to this church, but I, I, I want to know more. Put a question mark. And I'm a church member already, and I just I still have questions. Put a question mark. And so what I'm going to ask you to do, Redonna's going to come play. 
We're going to sing here in a minute, but just pray as she's playing. And if the Lord is leading, if the Lord is leading you to put an X or question mark in your name on here, do so. But then I want all of us, whether you're filled it out or not, to fold it. And when you leave, there's an offering plate on the right side, an offering plate, silver plate on the right side, silver plate on the left side. Just fold it and put it in there privately. But I want, even if you don't fill it out, please fold it and put it in there privately. And I'll contact, go ahead and play. All those who are needing this. You, you committed yourself, you committed your son for us. sing the last verse of the hymn we sang a while ago. Um, I love this verse. The Bible talks about, man, if I had all of nature in my hands, if I could have all the riches of this world, that'd be too small a present for you, God, for what you've done for me. But this love so amazing demands my soul, my life, my all. Let's sing this together. announcements before we before we leave thank you for your faithfulness uh, today in uh, just being here thank you for your faithfulness in listening to God and and I want to thank you for your faithfulness to being obedient to him now again not everybody's there and that's okay it's okay just to let you know that uh, just a few announcements uh, prayer requests 
And I'll give yellow slips on the back, on the left side, put them in the box on the right side that say prayer requests. Wednesday night Bible study, we're continuing on in our study in Revelation, we're in Revelation chapter 13, uh, this coming Wednesday at 6.30. Uh, just to, to speak to you all about this real quick, uh, we are going to be changing from using Zoom as our online video platform to Ring Central, um, and that'll be happening in June. And so you still use your Zoom this weekend, we'll, or this week, if you're joining us by Zoom, uh, but we'll be doing all that. We're still going to be on Facebook Live on Sunday mornings, uh, but from now on, we'll be doing the Ring Central. All right, uh, Sunday school each week. It's Bible study at 930. If you'd like to join us at Bible study at 930, we meet downstairs. We're starting, it started today. I'm so glad for those that came today and, and for each Sunday afterward. Things we just forgot, you know, we just have coffee ready, and there's no coffee ready, we forgot, that's okay. We'll get things back going. Um, and then next Sunday is an all-church picnic. You know what we do at those? We eat together. All right, so those that feel comfortable like to join us, it's just a potluck. We'll be grilling ha hamburgers and hot dogs, all beef hamburgers, all beef hot dogs. Uh, and then just bring all the, anything else you want to pass around. We'll be as safe as possible. If you're sick, don't. Stay, all right? Stay at home. We don't want you here. Get well, and we'll pray for you. That's next week. Uh, game night will be this coming Friday night. Uh, we, we're going to do two Friday nights in a row because we got it, got off the schedule that some people work every other Friday night. So we do this Friday night and the next Friday night and then off a of Friday night and do the every two. Women's ministry. Again, it says Coal Valley Days there. Uh, July 3rd, there's a parade, which we will be a part of. Uh, trying to get some new T-shirts made before that point. Uh, so uh, we'll be getting that information. We're also going to have a booth to do face painting, to give away toys, to do a lot of different things uh, for just to show love to our community on that day, June, July 3rd. More about that later on. Upcoming birthdays. Remember, this is a Sunday birthday. Next Sunday is, is May 23rd, and Teresa Warnock, if you're listening, online happy birthday next sunday but on sundays you get it twice this week and next week so upcoming anniversaries mike you have an anniversary coming up <laughs> just letting you know may 18th mike and christy christy's downstairs with the children so happy anniversary to you all all right and an offering on the way out if you'd like to give or you can give online Amen. anything else before we close Yes, Debbie. Okay. Yeah, so Rich is doing better. Um, he still has a little bit of recovery to go, so continue to pray. And, and uh, he's grumpy because of the thing, which is natural, all right, because of some of the recovery he's in. Just pray for Rich, pray for Debbie, and just uh, pray for their healing. All right. Let's stand as we close in prayer one more time today. God, thank you again for the day. Thank you for your love. May we live in your love and share that love with others. In Jesus' name, amen.